Hello, everybody. Today, I am joined by Asheville City Soccer Club men's head coach, Scott Wells. Scott, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? Terrific. Always love to talk some soccer. And this is your second season as head coach of Asheville. Um, what made you want to come back? Well, I think after the success of last season, you know, it was um, it, it was so much more than just, you know, where we finished um in terms of our national ranking or in terms of how far we went, it was the relationships that we had built, um, you know, from all of the guys, really, from the players, from the ownership, uh, from my staff. And it was just, it just felt like a perfect summer, um, apart from the fact that we didn't obviously go all the way. But um, there's obviously some um, unfinished business as well, um, for sure. You know, we we felt like we had a good enough group to go further. Um, but, you know, it just, there was a big buzz about last summer. And I think, uh when um when I spoke to the ownership about you know returning, it just seemed impossible to say no. To be honest, and you you kind of touched on this with your last answer, but could you expand a little more on like your overall thoughts on last season? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I have to be completely honest. We 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 did not meet our goals. You know, um, you know that that's hard to to say, and it's hard to hear myself saying it. But um, we we fully felt like you know we we lost one game all season in the regular season, and um. You know, we we felt like we were stronger than, you know, ever going into the national tournament, um, you know, but unfortunately, that's what, you know, playoff soccer is all about. You know, it's uh, it's not always who's the best on the day and, you know, things can go in different terms. And unfortunately, it wasn't our day, you know, in Florida against Fusion, who are also a fantastic team. Um, so, yeah. So for me, I think it's important for us to understand that we didn't reach where we needed to. And that should leave a big hunger this season um, for a lot of the returning players and the staff and myself. And you mentioned unfinished business, uh, leaving some hunger and the staff and the players' mouths. How, but you could also say last season was good as a building block for this season. How are you looking to build upon it? Um, I think you know the, the depth for it within USL two in general is 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 difficult, right? Because you've got players that have to leave early that come in late if you get, you know, a couple of injuries here and there. There's like a cut-off date to register new players. So so we were obviously constantly, I mean, to be honest, I was constantly recruiting throughout the whole summer, just looking at backup plans, what, you know, who could we bring in for a little late last-minute addition. Um, so there was a lot of things that we were trying to accomplish. Um, but uh, yeah, listen, I think that the biggest part of all of this is, you know, can we go ahead and win a championship? You know, can we do that? Um, have we got enough depth this year, which is what I think was the problem last season. And I think we do. I think we've gone and recruited two to three, you know, very, very competitive um, college ready and, and college proven players um, that have already, you know, established themselves and their name. And, you know, this is an opportunity to publicize them even more after the back of the success that six individuals got last season. You know, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But the depth for sure is is a big part of it. And you've mentioned the depth is a lesson that you learn kind of the hard way about how you had to make sure that you have it ready just because of all the stringent roster rules and USL too. Are there any other lessons that you learned during last year that you're looking to apply towards this season? Um, I think the the periodization piece for sure, um, you know, the, I was aware that the USL two was going to be rigorous in terms of, you know, the fatigue level um, of these players. And, and obviously in the summertime, the heat, you know, would get to them a lot. Um, we were, playing at one point three games in seven days, um, you know, and, and the rotation wasn't, we weren't able to do as good of a job of that. Um, so this year, what we have done is we've, we really um, pushed the recovery process and the, the periodization process. So I thought we'd done a good job of it last season, but, you know, we're playing on uh, all grass fields. We're training on all grass fields this year. We've got an even better relationship this year after magnificent start with uh, HF uh, Science Center, um, you know, that did an unbelievable job of taking care of guys, uh, Kim and uh, Ronnie Herrera, who were fantastic. Um, and so I think that we just put more emphasis into it, to be honest, and made sure that we can uh, really work on how do we keep these players healthier. And of course, like I said, the, the depth should help that, uh, but also how we how we train, where we train, um, you know, how we prepare, you know, what we're putting back into our bodies. I think we've just really tightened up the details on them just a little bit more. You were bringing back two assistant coaches from last year, Guy Campbell and Joe Barber. Can you speak a bit about both and why you decided that they were great fits to keep continuing? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've known Joe for a long, long time. Um, you know, we went to school together. Um, 
and uh, he's my right hand man at this point. You know, obviously uh, he's with me at the collegiate level as well. Um, so, um, you know, I trust him. That's the biggest thing is trust. Um, you know, he understands exactly what I want and how I want it done. And, um, you know, I think that we just have a great relationship. Guy Campbell is, is just, he's just the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, this guy is Mr. Asheville. You know, he, he, if you need something done, he's going to be able to figure out a way, you know, he's very well respected in the community of Asheville. Um, he's so passionate about the, the game and this club. Um, and he's just a wonderful man. And, um, you know, for me, I think he's somebody that not only can I trust, but, you know, he understands what it means to play for Asheville. He understands what it means to to represent the community of Asheville. Um, and, um, you know, he he was an unbelievable addition for us last season. You also are bringing Maddie MacArthur into the fold for this upcoming season. What does he bring to the team? Yeah, so obviously within my network and, and Joe's network, you know, we've always got someone out there that we trust. There's a certain uh, circle of coaches that we trust. Um, and Matty came really well recommended um, as a very young, energetic, very, um, very educated uh, coach, um, really modern coach, really understands, you know, what this generation of player needs, you know, not just from a, a tactical standpoint, from, from a cultural standpoint as well, from, from managing the players. Um, and we had a conversation or two um, about the opportunity here. Um, and um, yeah, he jumped at it. Uh, he came to our tryout as well, um, you know, came super organized and we were able to generate a bit of a relationship, um, you know, over that time. So yeah, for me, I think he's going to be huge for us. He's going to bring a lot of energy. He's Scottish. So, you know, we've got two English and Scottish and American. So we're covering as many bases as we can for energy. Um, so, so yeah, so, so, so we're really happy with him and we can't wait for him to get started. And while the roster building is still underway for the club, um, how so far, how do you feel that the roster is shaping up? Yeah, I think I think we've we we hit the ground running pretty early. Um, and for one particular reason, I was taking a collegiate, a new collegiate position. Um, and so over the Christmas period, uh, instead of probably taking a little bit more time off than I should have, um, I decided to get right to work with, you know, um getting Asheville City set early um because I was basically gonna have two two jobs, two recruiting classes on my hands, one with the summer and one in, in, in college. So um so we we hit it pretty hard early and i think we got the guys we wanted of course as every us or two coach knows it's um you know you win some you lose some um but we're, we're pretty happy with our number one and number two choice um for each position um we've continued to probably go all the way through until last week to finalize the roster uh we we hit a couple of um uh, situations with um, injuries, unfortunately, which again is part of the game. You know, guys are in the spring semester playing playing right now, and um, you, know, you know they picked up some injuries. Some of them are not too serious. Uh, some of them are unfortunately summer ending injuries. So, so yeah, we just finished, um, and I think it's going to be um, it's going to be a, it should be better than last season because we've learned. I've learned. I've reflected of what I felt like we needed that we lacked last season you know we we lost one game all season um and that was against one Knox at home I felt like that was more of a case of being maybe bullied out of the game rather than footballed out of the game you know so we brought in a little bit of muscle this year a little bit more from an aerial standpoint um but uh, but overall the identity and the vision from a tactical standpoint stays the same so um so I think we've just had a, a year of experience to really be able to educate ourselves on what that class looks like are there any new guys or returning players in particular that have caught your eye that Asheville fans should keep an eye out for? That's a hard answer. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, obviously what jumps off the page is, is Quincy Awareman, who's returning. You know, he's a captain last season. He was a leader on and off the field. Um, and he was he was just, he, was, he is Mr. Asheville City now at this point. You know, everyone's really excited to have him back. Um, I was at the uh, the Asheville City launch party last week and, you know, a lot of guys were asking, you know, is, is Quincy coming back? Is he excited? Um, so so he'll be a guy that we can lean on. You know, he um, he actually sent me a video today that we're going to present to the guys in preseason and really just explain them what it means to play for Asheville City. Um, and he and he knows he, he gets it now at this point. So he'll be like a, an assistant coach on the field for us. And we're really excited about having him in terms of new guys. I mean, I could go. I could go through 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 the roster. Um, you know, Scott Vatner um, and Frank uh, Gammies, uh, both are two from Elon uh, University that went to the national tournament last season. Uh, that we played against them at UNCG last season, and they were very very good. Um, I've been aware of Scott for a, a long time, um, and so we're we're really excited about them from an attacking standpoint. Uh, very good news that Cam Lacey is returning. You know, Cam was only with us for a short stint last season, but made a huge impact. 
he got drafted to FC Dallas and, you know, unfortunately that didn't work out, but you know, he's back to, to make sure it does work out next, next season. So um, yeah, the list could go on, honestly, we've, we've got so many quality players that we feel are going to be able to help us. Um, yeah, Olivia Correa at Jacksonville university, a player I was recruiting a while ago that I lost out to. I, I joked about this to the wise guys last season um, most of the guys I'm bringing in are guys that turn me down at the collegiate level, so I can't, I can't go, I can't really go wrong, to be honest. Hey, at least you went one for two, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. There you go. What would you say with the a year of experience under your belt, these new additions coming in, the return of some key players? What are your expectations? Um, we we my expectation is to win the USL two national championship. It, it really is. Um, you know, of course, I have you know, realistic goals for our team, um, you know, in, in past seasons, uh, the collegiate level, even last season at USL uh, two, we were, we were talking about winning the conference. We were talking about getting to the playoffs because that's something that Ashford City have not been able to do before. Um, we've done that now. Um, we know what it's, what it's about at the, at the playoff level. Um, we feel like we, we competed last season, but um, we have no excuses this year. Um, for me, of course, playoff football, as I just said, is, is difficult, you know, and you never know what's going to happen, but from a quality standpoint, I really, truly believe that our goal, our realistic goal should be to win the national championship. And if kind of like a message to the fans here, why should they be excited for this season? Well, I think um, they've seen it now. You know, they've witnessed it. Um, last season, I was probably more hesitant, you know, on, on what I was going to say for them to come out. You know, with with last season being our first season, we were able to go to the postseason in the USL2. You know, this season, we're bringing, um, you know, a staff back. We're bringing um, uh, the, the ownership back. We're bringing the play a lot of the returning players back. And these guys have proven... Uh, to the fans that they can go and excite them. And, and you know, we lost one game in front of them all last season. So it was an enjoyable experience for them. You know, there were some games that it was a high scoring game um, and, and it just, it shows just how far Asheville and the community of Asheville has come with soccer. Um, and we want them to be part of it because Asheville city is not Asheville city without the fans. There's no question. Um, of course, there's, you know, been concerns with us not going back to Memorial, um, you know, we're going to be at UNC Asheville. Um, you know, the club have gone through tremendous efforts to bring in brand new bleachers um, to really show the the energy and, the, you know, replicate exactly what we had at Memorial. But ultimately, the football is still going to be there. Um, so I think it's just a perfect summer for anyone um, that is in Asheville. Um, and, you know, I've had so many calls and texts and emails from so many fans that are just so pumped for this. So my message is, hey, you know, we're going to excite you just as we did last summer, but we're going to go one step further this time. Thank you so much for your time, coach. Thank you. I appreciate it.